Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Kathleen Fullen, and I would like to introduce Mike Verveer, running for Alder in District 4. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement about the educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office, and why you are running for Alder. Thank you, Kathleen. And I certainly want to thank you and the League of Women Voters and Madison City Channel for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I am a longtime member of the Madison City Council and have served the core downtown area in particular for 28 years. Uh, it has been an absolute honor of a lifetime to have the privilege of representing downtown residents on the City Council for as long as I have. I believe that strongly that I'm a proven leader that knows how to get things done. So, uh, you know, the experience I have in City Hall and outside of City Hall uh, is unmatched. And I say that, uh, you know, without trying to be uh, um, over, overly um, unmodest here, but, but, but that's the reality. Uh, and the reason why I have decided to seek reelection is because I do believe that there is tremendous unfinished business uh, that I can contribute to, to uh, taking care of. Um, my number one priority has always been to improve the quality of life for Madison residents, especially those that I represent downtown. Uh, I've made downtown Madison my home for many decades now uh, and, and have served in council leadership several times during my tenure on the city council. Uh, like so many others in our community, I came here to go to school and really never left. Uh, and and uh, we'll also add that I am a practicing attorney uh, for my day job. So I look forward to uh, uh, hopefully earning the trust of, of uh, downtown residents uh, for another term and look forward to our conversation today. What actions or programs would you support to enhance public safety in Madison? And in particular, what is your position on the use of body cameras by Madison police officers? The the, the fact of the matter is, is that Madison has a long, proud tradition of preventative uh, efforts as we address public safety. So not only, of course, the police department, but you can think of the fire department, our public health department. We have long had a, a strategy of prevention, first and foremost, toward public safety. Uh, I have been a proponent of a police body-worn camera pilot uh, since the first time it was discussed in City Hall. Oh, many, many years ago now. So I have consistently supported a pilot and, and certainly did so when the council voted narrowly late last year to move forward with a pilot on the north side of town. Uh, the, the city has engaged in the expertise of many members of our community over the last few years that have met as committees to discuss the issue of police worn body cameras. And um, I, like them, I, I believe have come to the conclusion that with the proper safeguards and the proper procedures uh, that we um, very much should utilize what so many other law enforcement agencies around Dane County, around the state, around the country uh, have long deployed, and that is uh, police worn body cameras. I believe that, that the pilot will show when it is launched later this year on the north side that it will improve police accountability and transparency for our community. And that trust between the community and the police department is ever so critical. And I, and I believe that there are just countless examples all over the country where police born, worn body cameras have made the crucial difference to, to find out exactly what the facts of the situation are and to bring people to justice, namely law enforcement officers that, that violate the law. Um, so I, I am looking forward to the pilot beginning later this year in the North District uh, and, and believe that it's, it'll be very much uh, worthwhile. What do you see as the most important environmental issues the city needs to address? And what will be your priorities for council action on these issues? Well, climate change is a tremendous crisis in our world, as, as I'm sure all of your viewers would agree. Uh, the city, I'm proud to say, has been a leader in the area of sustainability for many years as well. Uh, everything from our fleet, which has very um, rapidly uh, in, um, engaged in a program of, of 
a robust transition to EV, to electric vehicles of all types, not just cars, but trucks as well. Uh, even our, our very first uh, uh, fire engine, one of the first in the entire country uh, was piloted here uh, uh, in, in uh, Madison. So, so our, our fleet uh, services uh, department has done an excellent job leading the way uh, in that regard. Uh, there, in, in addition, our ambitious plans by our Sustainable Madison Committee and an action plan to move forward in, in many other areas. For me personally, um, the biggest impact that I've tried to make is as we deal with the tremendous growth downtown, the tremendous um, uh, need for additional housing in downtown Madison, and as I meet with the developers that are proposing new downtown residential um, opportunities, uh, and for that matter, although this was primarily before the pandemic, uh, commercial buildings that were of office or other uses, I bring up early and often in our very first conversation, the issue of sustainability. So although we don't mandate uh, and can't sadly under uh, antiquated Wisconsin state statutes and codes, uh, um, uh, sustainable features in, in our buildings in Madison to a, the degree we would all like them to be, there are obviously voluntary approaches that uh, developers can, can make in the area of renewable um, energy uses. Uh, for example, using uh, heat pumps and solar. Um, the city over the last few years has uh, uh, adopted a, a very sustainable, robust stormwater ordinance, which has led to widespread inclusion of green roofs, for example, on all new, down, new development, both downtown and citywide. So that's been a tremendous uh, improvement that that I have long supported. So, so uh, again, on a personal level, it, I would say that working on uh, with the development community on the new developments that's proposed in downtown Madison, uh, both affordability and sustainability are the two main issues that I constantly am in communication about. What is your position on increasing the pay for alders? Uh, the the issue of aldermanic pay is is a um, a touchy subject. So I would find myself in the middle ground there, Kathleen. Uh, just in the last budget deliberations last fall, there was a proposal for a substantial pay raise for members of the Common Council. Uh, one that I opposed as a member of the city's finance committee. There were there were very significant pay raises, doubling, tripling our pay that were proposed at the finance committee. I voted against those, but then on the council floor in November, when we were uh, deliberating on the budget as a body, I did support a much more modest pay raise for members of the city council. Uh, I believe that it is a crucial effort to attract a wide diversity of members of our community to be able to have this tremendous privilege of public service. Uh, for your viewers that aren't familiar, the current pay is is certainly nothing that you could live off of. You don't you at fourteen thousand dollars a year approximately. Uh, nobody does this, I, I think, uh, in reality to try to make a living. That would be obviously simply impossible. But the reality is is that as more and more of my colleagues choose to not run for re-election, as more and more of my colleagues at an alarming rate have resigned in the middle of their terms uh, for a variety of personal reasons. Uh, I do think that if there was additional financial compensation to negate the pressures of having a full-time demanding day job, which most all of us need to have, uh, that that a pay raise would be very helpful. What, if anything, do you think the city should be doing to support economic development? Well, the, the city, likewise, I'm bullish on our efforts uh, on economic development. Parochially speaking, Recovery from the pandemic downtown is a top concern, but obviously that's a community-wide concern as well. So especially continuing to help the small mom and pop businesses that are suffering from the um, you know, continuing impacts of the pandemic. Uh, for those of us downtown, the fact of the matter is, is that remote working, working from home is still a daily uh, opportunity for many. And so downtown businesses are suffering in that regard. On a more macro level, I think that we do a good job of, of convincing businesses to locate in our community, moreover to expand it in our community. We should be proud of the many homegrown success stories of, of businesses 
here. Um, but economic is, development is absolutely critical to the quality of life of our community, the livability of our community, and, and certainly to allow the, the city to have the financial resources to do all the good things we hope to do uh, for the people uh, of Madison. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address those? Racial disparities are a huge concern in our community and, and including in the district I'm honored to represent downtown. Uh, first and foremost, uh, in the area of housing. Uh, as we know, um, BIPOC um, members of our community are, um, are, are very much at a, a higher rate of, of being unable to afford the extreme cost of living in Madison and especially in downtown Madison. So um, I think about that on a daily basis, the, the fact that so many people in our community don't have the opportunity to easily live where they would like to live in Madison or even in the city of Madison. And I think racial disparities clearly uh, uh, play a factor in that, um, you know, from a society uh, perspective, that, that it's just um, an absolute truism that historically disadvantaged people uh, have those disadvantages, uh, you know, continue with them. And, and as it relates specifically to the district I'm honored to represent, I think first and foremost of the lack of available uh, and affordable housing opportunities for them. So it goes to my earlier reference where when I work with the development community downtown, I beg and plead with them to please uh, think seriously about providing some lower cost units in their new housing development. Uh, and 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 uh, you know that certainly will not change if I have the privilege of being reelected. What are the most critical issues that you see facing the people in your district, and what would you propose to address these? Well, I, I'm, I, at the risk of being uh, repetitious here, Kathleen, uh, clearly the issue of housing in downtown Madison is the number one issue facing um, uh, the 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 downtown residents and prospective downtown residents. First and foremost, we simply don't have enough housing supply in downtown Madison. Uh, whenever uh, units are available, they are quickly uh, spoken for. The Because the vacancy rates are so low in downtown Madison, uh, rents uh, are, are, are increasingly unaffordable to so many in our community. It, it simply is a landlord's market, not a renter's market. And so the availability of housing and then the availability of, of being able to afford that housing is by far the number one issue, uh, I think, facing uh, downtown residents, be they students or seniors, older adults, or anybody in between. It is a huge issue. The city has taken steps to try to address that. Uh, our hands, again, sadly, are tied by antiquated um, state statutes and where the city's preempted from trying to uh, require any sort of affordability, but we are working on more ways to have a carrot rather than a stick approach to try to encourage more affordable housing in the area, in the area downtown where that is especially promising is the idea of density bonuses. Uh, there's a student housing project under construction now in the 300 block of State Street that, that was allowed to have two additional stories of housing um, in return for setting aside uh, a little over 10% of their beds for lower cost, uh, at a lower cost to the future residents um, for, for decades uh, to come. And so that is something that I'd like to be able to replicate elsewhere uh, downtown and try to have that codified in the city's zoning code where that we can allow for um, some sort of density bonus in return for affordability um, in, in our housing. And what would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Well, certainly, again, uh, thank you to, to you, Kathleen, and to the League and Sit Madison City Channel for this opportunity. Uh, to the residents of downtown Madison, I, I humbly ask for your support again to continue this honor and privilege of representing you uh, in Madison City Hall for another two years. I do believe that I've been a proven leader that knows how to get things done. I have a strong rec track record of accomplishments. I have a very strong work ethic. I have long served on more city committees than any of my colleagues. And I say that not again to, to brag, but, but that that's just the reality because I do take this job so seriously. I absolutely have the energy, 
drive and commitment to continue doing this work for another two years. There is tons of unfinished business, uh, both the topics we've already addressed in the short time we have available here, uh, but also other exciting areas like the Lake Monona Waterfront uh, um, Initiative, whereby we have a real opportunity over the next couple of years to beautify and improve access to Lake Monona from downtown and the greater community. Uh, we will be rebuilding the John Nolan Drive Causeway in a couple of years. And I wanna be able to have a firsthand role in seeing forth that when we, when we replace the bridges on the causeway, that that includes the ultimate availability and improving the green space, the beautification, the lake access, having improved uh, opportunities for pedestrians and bicyclists uh, that are as safe as possible and segregated away from the motor vehicle traffic there. Uh, it's a very exciting opportunity. It's one of the reasons why I uh, absolutely am enthusiastic about continuing this work is because of the opportunities presented in the Lake Monona waterfront uh, um, project uh, as we move forward with that. Besides that, there are many other projects, both in downtown and citywide, that I um, uh, certainly am in the midst of working on and hope to continue that work. So this public service has meant the world to me. Uh, I, I you know, certainly don't consider myself a politician, uh, and, and but but the reality is is that I guess that's what I I, I have to be, uh, and so that's why I, I uh, humbly ask that I have the ability to continue to do the work that I've been doing all these many years uh, and continue to be an effective representative and improve the quality of life for all downtown residents uh, for one more for another term. So I really again thank you uh, for this opportunity. And, and humbly ask for your support both in February and April. I want to thank Mike Revere for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. I want to remind everyone that primary election day is Tuesday, February 21st, and the general election is Tuesday, April 4th. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.